What is up all my dorks, nerds, geeks, and gamers? You are watching a brand new show from Dorks Den. This is called Wet Ink. Um, and today we are looking at two comic books. Um, I am back in the comic book game. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 60, 60 and 61. Uh, we're going to be talking about both these issues and uh, about what's inside of them and how it moves the uh, Marvel Comics landscape moving forward. So let's talk about it. This is episode one of Wet Ink. Um, it's been a long time, like a very, very, very long time since I've uh, actually bought comic books and read comic books on the regular. Uh, so out of the blue, I decided, you know what, I'm going to get back into reading comic books on a regular basis. Um, and But I don't know where to start. And I always figured uh, Amazing Spider-Man has always been a great starting point for me, that or the Batman uh, comic book series. Uh, so I hopped in, I ordered 12 issues of the Amazing Spider-Man comic book series. I haven't read these since the Sinister Spider-Man days behind me here. Um, with Matt, with uh, Matt Gargan, Scorpion, running around in the Venom suit, eating people alive and all that during Fear itself. Uh, so it's been probably 10, 12 years since I bought a comic book and uh, hopped into the scene of reading them on a regular basis. So, but we're going to hop right in with Amazing Spider-Man number 60. What a great issue to start on. Um, apparently Harry Osborn is this creature known as the Death Eater, a new villain of sorts. I don't know what his power set is, but I assume he uh, takes souls and it's like a Mephesto sort of deal. Uh, nightmare sort of situation where he's kind of this supernatural threat um, now in the uh, Spider-Man lore. Uh, supposedly Peter defeated him in this uh, uh, before this issue starts um, and a lot of this issue is Peter talking to MJ and kind of dealing with the loss of Harry and kind of monologuing on how he could have done things differently one way or the other um, but it's mostly just a character driven Spider-Man story at this point um, it's not until halfway through the story where we even get a shot of Spider-Man in his suit uh, going around the city, zipping around, doing Spider-Man things. Um, that is until we cut to MJ, who is talking to Mysterio. So I'm assuming that MJ is going to turn out to be the chameleon, and she was manipulating Peter for some reason, um, and, the reason we do, and that reason we don't know. Uh, we then cut to uh, Doctor Strange, who is then asking Mephisto... Uh, all these questions. He's like breaking into Mephisto's realm to meet Mephisto and at the very last page you get the reveal where he says what is wrong with Peter Parker's soul. So apparently Peter Parker's soul is going to play a big role in this upcoming arc um, for the Spider-Man character. Once again not knowing anything and hopping in that's a cool segment to start on. Um, so yeah very cool. Uh, issue 60 of The Amazing Spider-Man going in a good solid direction. For me this is a setup issue. Uh, the real bread and butter comes into issue 61, uh, where Spider-Man actually gets a brand new uh, comic, or a brand new, uh, of course it's a new comic, but a brand new suit. Uh, it's white, it's got cameras for lenses, he's a vlogger now, he works for J. Jonah Jameson. A lot goes on in this issue, uh, story building wise. And it leaves a lot of those threads from issue 60 left unanswered, uh, such as what's going on with the soul part of this. What, uh, what's going on with Harry Osborn, Soul Eater, and how does he play into all this? Uh, and who's Mary Jane and Mysterio? Why are they working together? None of that gets answered in this issue. Instead, we deal with Kingpin, who is after Boomerang, Fred Meyer's Boomerang, for some reason. He's the big MacGuffin of the arc. Um, so this, this starts off the plot where it's going to be Spider-Man in his brand new suit, who is working with J. Jonah Jameson. Uh, which is also a very cool twist uh, for being a fan of the comics from way in the old days to come back now and to see them still playing with those tropes of J. Jonah Jameson and Spider-Man and all that good stuff. It's, it's great to see still going on in the Marvel comics. Um, so yeah, we get a lot of that. He gets his new suit. He's testing it out. He's having fun with it. Uh, one of the funny thing is the suit actually has underlying advertisements, so it's low-key a... Um, very market friendly suit. Uh, they can load in advertisements and set them off without Spidey even talking. They'll talk for him. Um, he has a vote on your own quips. Like fans can vote on the quips he uses while he's fighting. Uh, polls and all that good stuff. We have the female Beetle who shows up in this issue. Her father and brother do at least. Um, and they're talking about her. Or no, it's her and her father talking. Uh, about her coming back out of hiding. Apparently there's a female beetle, so it'll be cool to see if she teams up with Spider-Man and the Black Cat uh, Spidey sort of situation to take on this threat, because it looks like there's going to be a ton of villains. Hammerhead, Tombstone, um, Silvermane, a bunch of them going after Boomerang for whatever reason. 
So, yeah, this issue is basically them setting that up. Spider-Man is uh, distracted with the a few villains. Uh, you get Shocker in there, um, Aquaman, not Aquaman, um, the water guy, um, Hydro-Man, that's his name. Hydro-Man, Shocker, and a few other villains, Boomerang, and it's all a distraction to get to Boomerang. It ends with a shot of Bullseye, who has a crosshairs on Grog, which is this little demon creature who is cute. It's a cute little demon creature. I'm not sure where he came from because, once again, I've been out of the loop for almost 12 years. So I'm not sure where this creature came from, but uh, he gets the sight set on Grog, and it looks like he's going to pull the trigger, and that's where the issue ends. Is Spider-Man going to be able to reach him in time? Um, is he going to save him? Is he going to save the day? Who knows? But I, it leaves me very excited for issues 62 and beyond, 62, 63, 64, um, and beyond those. So I'm very, very happy that I got back into The Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, there is a few other series I have ordered that should be coming in soon that I could read, and we will be doing more episodes of Wet Ink covering those series. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you guys uh, really go out and check out these Amazing Spider-Man issues. Marvel is still knocking comic books out of the park. I know it's kind of a dead medium. But don't let it die, guys. Let it let it continue. Uh, amazing artwork, great storytelling still going on in these mediums. So let's keep them alive and appreciate what we have uh, for what we have it for. So, yeah, that's just my opinion, guys. I really enjoy these Spider-Man issues. Marvel's still doing great. I will be looking forward to future issues. Let me know in the comments down below what issues you guys would like me to, what kind of series you'd like me to get into comic book-wise. Let me know some of your best writers or artists, because I am interested in getting back into the comic book scene. Uh, it's been a long, long time, so let me know down below. Make sure you keep it right here on Dorkston. I've been your host, Ghost. Adios, guys. Mm -hmm.